Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We are so grateful that you are here and worshiping with us today, and we'd love to be able to connect with you. So if you would, please take a moment and click the link that's in this video description, or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and tell us how we can be in prayer for you this week. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join with me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be found on your screen. God of hope, through the death and resurrection of Jesus, you taught us that the worst thing is never the last thing. Help us to trust in you even when we can't see you working. In the sure and certain hope of your love, we offer ourselves to you. May your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As a fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name. Not to preach our creeds or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nation, finding neighbors everywhere. We are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is life. In an humble, listening spirit, we would live to God's delight. As a green bud in the springtime, is a sign of life renewed. So may we be signs of oneness in Earth's people's many hue. As a rainbow lights the heavens when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's new and glorious dawn. Hello, I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And it's my privilege to lead us in our morning prayer for the vine service today. Now I'm going to pause during the prayer so that you will have the opportunity to speak the names of persons that you would especially like to remember in prayer today. So let us pray together. Dear God, you have loved us when we certainly did not deserve your love. You have helped us so many times when we didn't even say thank you. In this troubled world filled with many dangers and perils, you have truly given us a hope and a future. Our help is in you, O oh God, the maker of heaven and earth. Look upon our needs this day with kindness and generosity and help us to truly love you and love one another as you have loved us. Make us quick to forgive, slow to anger, and eager to serve you. 
Make us grateful for the good news of salvation and keep us faithful in your service until Jesus returns to right all wrongs, make all things new, and redeem your church. As we name those whom we know have special needs for healing, remind us of our own need to be prayed for. And so we especially pray today for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts. Hear our prayers, O Lord. As we worship you today, we pray for your mercy and your grace. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray as your loving children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we reflect on our Christian stewardship, we are reminded that God is the creator and owner of all things. We give back to God as people who are thankful for our blessings. You can worship God by giving offerings at a live worship service or mailing checks to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Or you can also give through our church website and our church cell phone app. Hey guys, Pastor David here, and as you can tell, I'm not at Riceville Beach when I'm videoing this. Yep, I'm up in the mountains of West Virginia at Snowshoe, West Virginia, with our high school youth group for the annual ski trip. And that's where I'm videoing the children's message for the Vine service today. Now, as you can see, I'm all ready to go skiing. I've got my skis, got my gloves on, got my helmet, my goggles, you know, all the equipment that I need it's not enough. In order to really successfully ski, you have to know how to ski. You have to learn how. And that's why I always emphasize how important it is to take lessons. Because when you take ski lessons, you learn how to stop, you learn how to turn. Hey, if you're going down the mountain and all of a sudden there's a tree right in front of you, you need to be able to stop or at least turn and go around it. Well, it's the same thing in life. We have to learn some very important skills that will help us in life. And that's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have our children's ministry activities. That's why we have our church, so that we can help people to learn how they can best uh, live their lives, kind of like going down the ski slopes at a ski mountain. So keep that in mind. If you ever go skiing, and I hope I'll see you on the slope someday, make sure you take a lesson and make sure that you take advantage of the opportunities that we have at our church to help you to develop the skills that will help you to know how to best live your life. Let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks for the children and youth of our church and community. We pray your blessings on them and their families. Help us through our church to learn how to live our lives in a way that honors you and in a way that, that we can live life safely. In Jesus' name, amen. See you on the slopes.
Hi, I'm Doug Lane, Senior Pastor at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And just wanted to take a moment to thank you for uh, spending time with us today and worshiping with us. We're continuing our sermon series called A Sure and Certain Hope, looking at um, different scriptures that we find throughout the Bible that uh, talk about hope and the importance of that in our daily life. And today we're looking at Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. From this time on and forevermore, this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you are always, always looking after us. Lord, I pray that um, we might connect with you even more strongly as we get into your Word and hear your Word. And Lord, wherever it may be that I may say a wrong word, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will take over and that instead um, people will hear what you want them to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I've got a question for you. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? I heard about an optimist that was talking to a pessimist one summer day, and he said, isn't this a beautiful, sunshiny day? And the pessimist replied, well, it may be, but if this heat spell doesn't stop soon, all the grass is going to burn up. Two days later, the optimist said to the pessimist, isn't this rain just wonderful? The pessimist replied, well, if it doesn't stop soon, my garden's going to wash away. The next day, the optimist invited the pessimist to go duck hunting. The optimist had just bought a new hunting dog, and he said, I want you to keep your eye on this dog. He can do things no other dog can do. The pessimist looked at the dog and said, looks just like a dumb dog to me. Well, at that moment, a flock of ducks flew over, and the optimist shot one of the ducks, and it fell into the very middle of the lake. He snapped his fingers, and this new dog ran after the duck. Amazingly, the dog ran on top of the water, picked up the duck, and ran back on top of the water. The optimist took the duck out of the dog's mouth, turned to the pessimist and said, what do you think of my dog now? The pessimist replied, I told you he was a dumb dog. He can't even swim. Someone has well defined the difference between a pessimist and an optimist this way. When trouble comes, the pessimist says it's enough to make a person lose his religion, while the optimist says it's enough to make a person use his religion. I believe every Christian should be an optimist. Now, I get as anxious and nervous as the next person, but I know who holds the future. And if you're in a position where your only help and your only hope is God, you should not be pessimistic. You should be optimistic because God has you right where you need to be. The psalmist who wrote these words was definitely an optimist. The writer had done what all of us tend to do when we're in trouble. He looked every place but the right place. He tried everything but the right thing. He asked every person but the right person. He found every avenue to be a dead-end street. The Living Bible translates verses 1 and 2 this way. Shall I look to the mountain gods for help? No. My help is from Jehovah who made the mountains and the heavens too. One thing that's common to every person and institution on earth is that we have problems. You've got problems. I got problems. Now, there are different problems. Some aren't as severe as others, but we all got them. The home faces problems. The church faces problems. Government faces problems. Our nation has problems. We all got problems. The answers to these problems is not going to be found, though, on Wall Street or Capitol Hill, but at the throne of a holy Lord. We're all going to be shaken by the tremors of trials Troubles and tribulations. When you feel the ground beneath your feet shaking and quaking, there are some sure and certain things that God will give you 
that will help you to overcome and be victorious, starting with security. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, says verse 2 of the psalm. Can you think of anyone you would rather have as your helper than the God who created the universe? I'm talking about the God who is higher than the hills, mightier than the mountains, stronger than all the armies, greater than all the generals. I'm talking about a God who created this world by just opening his mouth and speaking it into existence. I'm talking about the God of whom the prophet Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. If we would only realize how powerful our mighty God is, we would understand that when God is the only help we have, He's also the only help we need. If you ever get to go to Jerusalem, you'll see that the old city is built on a hill. Whenever we read a Bible passage about people going on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, we read that these people went up to Jerusalem. Many of the Psalms in the Old Testament were written as traveling worship songs that spiritual pilgrims would sing together as they traveled from the surrounding towns to worship in the temple on Mount Zion. As they climbed the hill to Jerusalem, the caravan of people would sing a psalm of praise or perhaps of lament. And that's why many of the psalms are titled a song of ascents. It means a song to sing as you climb up the hill. So when life seems like an uphill climb to you, can you still find a song to sing? Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In these first two verses, the psalmist is moving his focus from his problems to God's power. The people of God are climbing the hill to the holy temple. They're at the point in the journey where there is a lot of effort that's been expended, but no results yet. So they encourage each other along the way, and they continue to look up, continue to strain to see the top of the mountain, straining toward that moment when they can join in the worship of God. In the temple, in an act of worship, they'll find hope and wisdom, joy and strength and perspective, quite frankly. They will find refreshment for their souls. Why are they climbing this hill? What's the point of this journey? To worship. To worship the almighty, most powerful God, the God who made heaven and the earth. Whatever problems we may bring to our worship, we know we are laying them at the feet of a God who created the universe and all the natural laws and put them in motion. When we recall the power of the God that we serve, we gain a new perspective on our problems and on the possibilities for God to redeem our situations. I was reminded of this when I was serving a church in Wendell many years ago. I had a Meals on Wheels route that I ran every other Wednesday. My route took me through the wonderful community of Lizard Lick, North Carolina. Honest to God. These were not church members that I saw on the route, but when you see the same people, even for a minute, every other week, you start to get to know a little bit about them. Well, one day I went to this frail old lady's house, and when I knocked, no one came to the door. I knocked again. No one came. It was weird. Because the woman's front door was open, although the screen door was closed. I knew she lived alone and wouldn't have left the house without locking her front door. In fact, she didn't even drive. So I opened the screen door and I kept yelling the woman's name. Still no answer. I went to put her lunch down on the kitchen table. And that's when I saw her lying on the floor. She had fallen. She was bleeding pretty badly. I called 911 and waited until the ambulance arrived. She was conscious. I didn't try to move her, but I did talk to her until the paramedics got there. I found some towels and put them around her head and around her arm, which were bleeding. The arm was really the worst. She'd had really thin skin and had obviously scraped it when she fell, and for whatever reason, the blood just kept, kept going. The kitchen floor had become quite a mess. When help finally arrived, I watched her get taken away on a stretcher. I kept thinking, what if I hadn't been there? What if I hadn't stopped by? 
I don't know that another single soul would have seen her that day. I checked on her the next day, and fortunately, she had survived the accident in her home. She said to me, God brought you to me yesterday. He was looking out for me. Now, you might call it coincidence. You can say it was just good timing, but you would never convince that woman that God didn't have something to do with it. That's what the people going up to Jerusalem were hoping to find. The power of God to give them help and hope for their living their lives in the midst of their daily problems. Listen as the psalmist continues. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. This simple faith in God's constant presence sounds like the faith of a child. Or perhaps the faith of someone who has gone through many sleepless nights and has discovered, well, as it turns out, she wasn't alone in her struggles. In Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, it's nighttime. The lovers, Romeo and Juliet, are separated by their family's deadly feud. Suddenly, Juliet realizes Romeo stands below her window out the garden. When she realizes he's there, she asks how he came. Why didn't he stay away? After all, this is a pretty dangerous move. Romeo answers, With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls. For stony limits cannot hold love out. And what love can do, that dares love attempt. I love that line. What love can do, that dares love attempt. We're most likely to feel our helplessness at night, in the darkness, when we no longer have to keep up appearances and we have nothing else to distract us from the truth. We let our struggles and our questions gnaw at us. But when we lie awake at night and we ruminate on our situation, we can be assured that God is right there with us. We are not alone. In the book of Job, verse 35, one of Job's friends refers to God as our maker who gives songs in the night. And it's at nighttime, when they're shackled and stuffed in a prison cell, that Paul and Silas begin singing songs of praise to God. Their shackles fall off. The prison doors swing open. The prisoners walk out as free men. Knowing that God neither slumbers nor sleeps, inspires us to sing songs in the night and to find meaning in the hardest of circumstances. We continue. Verse 7, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. What an amazing promise. God is with us now and forevermore. As a parent watches over a child, so God watches over us. We are not a statistic. We are not a face in the crowd. We are known and loved by God. There's a wonderful little children's book written um, some years ago titled, Are You My Mother? Some of you probably grew up with this book. It was recently named one of the top 100 children's books of all time. I know we read it a lot to our kids when they were young. It's a story of a baby bird that's just recently been hatched and its mother is away searching for food. When it realizes that mom is missing, it sets off on a quest to find her. On the way, the little bird asks everyone it encounters if they are his mother. On its journey, the little bird encounters a kitten, a hen, a hound dog, a cow, an airplane, and even a steam shovel, and each time inquires, Are you my mother? Each responds according to its kind. The kitten just stares. The hen simply says no. The dog would like to be helpful, but the cow responds rudely, How could I be your mother? I'm a cow. In desperation, the hatchling calls out to an uncaring boat and to an airplane, and at last, convinced he's found his mother, The little bird climbs onto the teeth of an enormous power shovel, but he's betrayed by the huge piece of earth-moving equipment as it shudders and grinds into motion, 
and he can't escape. He says, I want my mother, he shouts. And he's suddenly taken higher and higher into the air. And at this climactic moment, his fate is suddenly reversed. The shovel drops him back in his nest, just as his mother is returning home. And then it's the mom who asks the question, do you know who I am? She's the one who would never forsake him. She's the one watching over him, loving him as no other could ever love him. That's the picture the psalmist paints for us. In the Creator's eyes, our lives have infinite value. Listen to Jesus' words from Matthew 10. He's sending the disciples out into hostile territory to tell the people that the kingdom of heaven is near. And he reassures them with these words. He says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. That's how much God loves us. Even the very hairs on our head are numbered. If God knows us that intimately, then doesn't it stand to reason that God has a plan in mind for our lives? And not just this life, but forevermore. Why would God give us eternal life if God didn't love us and want to preserve us forever? So in times when life seems like an uphill climb, we lift our eyes unto the Lord from where our help comes. We find peace in knowing that our lives are valuable to God in this world and, yes, even the life to come. We take refuge in God's unfailing love. One final word. As we noted at the beginning, this is one of the psalm of, of ascents. Psalms sung by pilgrims making their way up to worship in Jerusalem. Now, most religions of the world represent people's efforts to reach up to God and become acceptable to Him. For example, there's a World Heritage Site in China where devout Buddhist pilgrims ascend a sacred mountain called Taishan. They climb 7,000 steps to its summit, first passing through the middle gate, then through heaven's southern gate, and finally they reach one of the most beautiful buildings in all of China the temple of the azure cloud. Here they offer sacrifices, which the worshipers believe will gain God's favor. Pictures I've seen of this place look really cool. But the Christian faith is completely different from that. We believe we don't have to go up to God. Instead, that God came down to us in Jesus of Nazareth. God is a powerful presence in our lives through the continuing work of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to look up, for God has come to us. Listen to these words again. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, it's amazing to think that you who've created this entire universe Take the time to watch over each and every one of us. Holy God, we thank you that you protect us, provide for us, give us security. And so when things happen in our lives, the things that keep us up at night, know that you're with us and you're willing and able to help us, to give us hope for the future. Lord, thank you for surrounding us with your strength, for being faithful to your promises, and for helping us to know that we are never, ever alone. In your Son's most holy name we pray.
Where does your help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The one who watches over our comings and our goings, both now and forevermore. Know that God is with you every moment of your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may be.